Okay, our next talk is featuring uh, Arthur Chargreau uh, about separation logic for sequential programs. Separation logic was introduced in the early 2000s. Since then, it has had tremendous success at program verification. I believe that today, the ideas of separation logic deserve to be taught much more widely. For this reason, I've been working on a course on separation logic. The course focuses on sequential programs. Concurrency is interesting, but it's much harder. The course is written in the style of the Software Foundation series, where every definition, every lemma, and every exercise is formalized using the Cock proof system. The course covers modern features of separation logic. These are features that were not present in the original papers on separation logic, but have, since then, proved very useful for developing practical tools. The third contribution of this paper is an extensive related work section, which I believe nicely completes Peter Horn's survey, which was published last year, by focusing specifically on the contributions to mechanized presentations of separation logic. My course is organized in 10 chapters. The first three chapters focus on basic features of separation logic, such as E predicates, triples, and tailwind. The next three chapters focus on the presentation of reasoning rules, either in the form of triples, in the form of weakest preconditions, or in the form of characteristic formulae, which are a form of weakest precondition generator. The remaining chapters focus on more advanced features, such as the magic wand, the treatment of affine predicates, and language extensions, such as records, arrays, loops, or NRE functions. Let me take a few minutes to explain how the course is set up at a very high level. Traditional courses on separation logic consider while loop language. I consider instead, like other colleagues before me, an imperative lambda calculus. This choice leads to major simplification. The fact that there are no mutable variables lead to an elegant statement of the framework without any side condition. At the same time, the use of a lambda calculus means that every term produces a value, and this leads to a minor complication the fact that postconditions need to describe not just an output state, but also an output value. Concretely, where preconditions are of the type ip to prop, postconditions are of type value to ip to prop. The standard operators, such as a star, a magic wand, or entailment, thus need to be extended to a form that operates on postcondition. These are marked with a little dot symbol be below the operator. The semantics is described in the standard way as a call by value, substitution based, big step style semantics. The choice of a big step semantics is well suited for reasoning about total correctness of sequential programs. It makes the proof simpler. Both the syntax and the semantics are described in standard ways following the style of the presentation of the prior software foundation volumes, which will make it easy for students to follow. Separation logic is presented in a shallow embedding. This means that the core E predicates of separation logic are defined as cock functions from heap to propositions. Entailment is defined in the standard way, as simplest possible way, as pointwise entailment. The remaining operators are encoded in terms of these core operators. All the details I will just refer to the course. Triples are defined in two stages. First, a hard triple, HTQ, asserts that for any state S satisfying the precondition, the term T terminates on a value V and an output state S prime that, together, satisfy the postcondition Q. A separation logic triple, HTQ, is defined by quantifying universally on a predicate H prime that describes the rest of the world, and asserting that the triple made of H star H prime and q star cube h prime makes up a valid hot triple. The standard technique of baking in the frame rule leads to simple proofs for the structural rules, such as the frame rule or the consequence rule. I'd like to take the rest of the talk to present four features of modern separation logic, which I believe should be to interest of every, to every ICFP researcher. Let me begin with a ramified frame rule. The frame rule, in its most standard statement, is almost never applicable. Indeed, you need both the precondition and the postcondition 
to syntactically feature a star h2. Thus, in practice, one will typically use a combined rule that integrates the rule of consequence and is stated as follows to prove a triple HTQ derivable from a triple H1TQ1. One has to show that the precondition H decomposes as H1 star H2 and then shows that the postcondition Q1, when extended with H2, recovers the postcondition Q. H2 can be computed as a difference between H and H1. Computing this difference can be well automated in a simple case, but if H contains existentially quantified variables, it can be quite tricky to figure out whether these corresponding variables should get quantified in H1 or in H2. The ramified framework avoids this problem altogether by removing the need to introduce H2 in the first place. It reformulates the premises as a single entailment. H entails H1 star some predicates such that when augmenting Q1 with it, we obtain Q. The operator at play here is the magic one for postcondition. Without going into further detail, let me just point out that the ramified frame rule has proved very practical for developing practical tools. The second point I'd like to focus on is the weakest precondition presentation of separation logic. Just like in all logic, weakest precondition is a key ingredient, but what is the definition of WP in separation logic? And what is the statement of the framework in weakest precondition style? So WP, just like in all logic, can be defined as an equivalence between a triple HTQ and the entailment from H to WPTQ. This equivalence is not quite a definition. There are two definitions that are, uh, can be considered. One is a low-level definition, working in terms of heaps, and another one is based on an encoding using the operators of separation logic. The weakest precondition frame rule can be read as follows. If I own a resource a state in which I can execute the term t and obtain the postcondition q, and separately I own a piece of state described by h, then altogether I own a piece of state in which the execution of t terminates and produces a postcondition described by q extended with h. Interestingly, the weakest precondition frame rule can be combined with the ideas of the ramified frame rule leading to the rule shown at the bottom of the slide here. This rule subsumes all of the structural rules of separation logic. The third feature is a mixing of affine and linear predicates. A linear predicate describes a resource that must remain accounted for throughout the reasoning. It is essential, for example, to prove that every allocated data eventually gets deallocated or every file open eventually gets closed. And a finite predicate, on the contrary, describes a resource that may be freely discarded in the reasoning. Typically, this notion of a finite predicate is a must-have for garbage collected languages, which do not feature explicit free operations. So it is straightforward to set up a linear separation logic, and it is not much harder to set up an affine separation logic. But what is a simple way to set up a separation logic where both linear and affine e predicates can coexist. I describe in the course construction that is relatively simple, which relies on the introduction of a predicate, h affine, that can be customized to define which heaps should be considered affine as opposed to linear. Top of that, can define the notion of affine e predicates that characterize only heaps that are fine, and the, the notion of a a fine top predicate which characterizes any affine heap. The definition of separation logic triples can be generalized by introducing a top, a fine top predicate in the post condition. Doing so preserves the validity of all the prior rules of separation logic and adds two additional rules. The first one asserts that any piece of precondition H prime may be discarded from the precondition provided that it's a fine. The second rule 
allows to extend the post condition with an affine top predicate, reflecting on the fact that it is fine to produce a post condition that is bigger than the desired one. Fourth and last feature I'd like to describe is a frame-friendly rule for reasoning about loops. So consider, for example, an operation that traverses a linked list or traverses a tree data structure recursively. If this operation is implemented as a recursive function, one can invoke the frame rule around the recursive calls to forget about the cells or the, the parts of the trees that are passed by. On the contrary, if the operation is implemented as a loop and specified using a loop invariant, the loop invariant must describe the list segment of cells that have already been passed by, or worse, in the case of a tree, must describe the tree context associated with a path that has already been traversed. The question here is, how can we reason about syntactic loop construct as easily as recursive function that will allow us to exploit the framework. So what we're trying to achieve here is essentially simulate an encoding of a while loop as a recursive function, but without introducing the overheads of an actual explicit encoding. The idea is to specify the while loop by relating the behavior, the state at the given iteration with the state after the last iteration. And such a specification can be established by induction, using Cox induction mechanism, by applying the following unrolling rule, which essentially unfolds a while loop one iteration. This rule introduces a conditional, a sequence, and a recursive occurrence of the while loop. When reasoning about this recursive occurrence of the while loop, one may apply the frame rule to frame the parts of the list or of the tree that we are like stepping over. So in the course, I describe an example illustrating this proof technique and um, compare it with the proof based on the loop environment. In conclusion, uh, you can find on my web page the paper including its eight-page appendix, on all the course material, both in COC format and HTML format. This course is meant to be released soon as a volume of the Software Foundation series. I'm actually seeking for feedback, both from students and teachers, to further polish the material. So if you're interested, please get in touch with me, um, and I will be happy to serve as a TA for you if you're teaching the course. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Arthur. Um, uh, he's now available in the New York time band for question and answer.